Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob Marsiglio, sales representative with Keller Williams Referred Urban Realty out here in Durham Region, helping the great people of this part of the province and doing my best to bring you weekly content on this channel covering all things greater Toronto area real estate. This week you can tell from the thumbnail, the FOMO machine is running in full force right now. The real estate industry is really trying to pull on these levers or so it seems to me. I want to go over three different things that I'm seeing that you should be aware of and maybe bring them a little more context and clarity for you, the consumer. Now, first off, FOMO, the fear of missing out. It's like an age old tactic in this industry. And we're just gonna really see it ramp up early this year, in my opinion, especially just because yes, sales are picking up a little bit from last month. Last year was also a historically slow year. We've talked about it on the channel before, going back to 2001, slowest year from reported sales perspective that we've seen. So there are some people hurting, commissions were down last year, needing to make sales, maybe feeling a little more pressure and ratcheting these tactics up a little bit. Like I said, there's three different things that I wanna jump into. The first one is this article. We're going to this video format today, but I want you to tell me in the comments, please, 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 I want this to be an enjoyable viewing experience for you each week. Do you like me with my little head on the side over here. Do you like it when I'm bigger and the graphics pop up in front of me? Please let me know. Anyways, here we go. Real Estate Magazine. This is the headline that they put out on January 24th, 2024. Survey shows 87% of Canadians choose real estate investing over stocks for extra income in 2024. And I'm just going to read you the first sentence from this article. Despite economic and global challenges, Canadians still turn to real estate investing as a way to build extra income and generational wealth. According to a survey by Valor Group, District REIT, and pro funds mortgages. So wow, 87% of Canadians are choosing real estate investing in 2024 despite all this economic uncertainty. Makes you wonder as a consumer, what am I missing out on? I better kind of explore this a little more and maybe consider investing in 2024. At the very bottom of the article, there is a link to the actual report or the study that is put on by these companies at the top of the screen here. And you can see it is a 2024 real estate investor outlook report and it shows investor confidence in the real estate industry, not actually Canadians as a general population. So right off the bat, we're talking about a report geared to investors specifically that we're then extrapolating and say 87% of all Canadians are looking forward to investing in real estate or investing there for extra cash flow. That's the other part of the sentence that's crazy there. They're investing there for extra income in 2024. Meanwhile, here's the actual question from the survey. Do you feel more comfortable investing in the stock exchange or real estate? and 87% said they're more comfortable investing in real estate. Here's the data presented on an infographic from the study. 87% feel more comfortable investing in real estate compared to publicly traded stocks. And then Real Estate Magazine runs with this headline, survey shows 87% of Canadians choose real estate investing over stocks for extra income in 2024. So nowhere in this study is there a question saying, what do you prefer to invest in as a Canadian for extra income in 2024? It's asking what a group of real estate investors are more comfortable investing in the stock exchange or real estate. Anyways, just while this was actually published, saw it circulating a little bit, uh, just, you know, dig a little deeper in these articles. We'd nip this in the bud in how far into this video am I? Probably about a four minute mark now. So that's number one, look out for these articles that are kind of uh, promoting a hot market, like exuberance or a ton of interest in the market. Um, that in my opinion, something that's just creating FOMO or the fear of missing out. The second thing you're going to hear a lot about, and you probably have been hearing a lot about, is offer nights. I know I've done a couple of videos about offer nights on this channel already, but we had kind of like the offer night of all offer nights just this past week. If you haven't heard about it by now, I'm going to tell you. So it was a property out in Mississauga, a semi-detached home, and they ended up receiving a total of 85 offers on their property on offer night. In addition to the 85 offers, they're reports that there are about 297, you know, we'll call it 300 groups through the home for book showings, plus an additional 200 groups through open houses on the weekend. Now, after the numbers were reported in terms of the sale price, Dan Foch did a great breakdown on Twitter. It was a $750,000 listing that had 85 offers and sold for $999, $999. So it's about 35% higher than what they paid in 2017 for the property. Compounded annually, you're just shy of 4.4% growth rate which is about the 100-year average price growth in Canada. Then he went on to say that it's worth noting that the sale price was $999,999 and not $1 million, and that is because we all know a CMHC insured mortgages, the cap on those is $999,999. Anything a million or more, you need a 20% down payment, 
and it's kind of not insurable. So, you know, Dan calls out the fact that CMHC is really kind of cementing this price floor in the market with that policy. 85 offers is insane. It's something that we hadn't seen even from 2020 to early 2022. But we have to realize that this place was severely underlisted, and that the majority of these offers were probably for people of budgets close to $750,000, $800,000, people that didn't even really have a chance to get this property. You know, who's to say that if it wasn't listed at, you know, nine fifty dollars or a million dollars, that wouldn't have sold for the exact same amount with just a little less offer activity. What's spun off of this now is that, you know, there are 84 losers in that offer night situation that are out there clearly looking for homes. I think John Flynn put it really, really well. Like we always have demand in the real estate market in Toronto area, you know, Mississauga in this instance. So just because there's 84 groups interested doesn't mean they're going to move the needle on prices, especially if affordability is so squeezed that they're kind of looking for homes in that $750,000 to $2 million range. And here's kind of what I mean by that. You know, early indications are that for January 2024, you can see the trend for average prices is down still from, from October, November, December to January. Now, our average sale price was a million eighteen thousand eight hundred seventy dollars at least from early preliminary numbers so i don't pretend to be a mathematician or anything like that but i think 750 to a million is less than even the current average sale price so those those buyers are not going to be moving the needle on that average sale price in an upward direction in this market and the last point that i'll bring up on offer nights is that you expect them to pick up at this time of year i did some digging on the mls and did my best to kind of determine the frequency of offer nights going back to 2016 on a monthly basis. You can see here from December to January, that's the red dotted line each year. That line is almost always moving up, you know, with the exception of 2022 into 2023, where it was a little flat, but we expect to see the offer night strategy employed a little more early in the year. And I've got a warning for you. If history teaches us anything, it's going to continue. You know, I've done a blue line from January to February now, uh, freshly updated for YouTube. Nobody's ever laid eyes on this chart before until right now. The frequency of offer nights is going to pick up more than likely in February. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that more buyers come out before sellers are ready to come to market. So if you are a seller in January, February, when there's not a ton of inventory out there, but the buyers have kind of started circling, list a little low, the strategy, sadly, it still works. People come to see the home, even at the lower price point. Uh, and, you know, these properties do sell quicker, whether they sell, you know, what that number is relative to market value to be determined. Even these properties that are selling now in offer night situations, they're not selling for the same amounts that we saw in 2022, 2021 in some cases. But the offer night strategy has been employed at least since 2016, as we can see, probably further back in some areas too. So it's just something to expect and not kind of develop a sense of FOMO over the fact that they're picking up. So I've touched on articles to be aware of, you know, being very weary of hearing about offer nights and the frequency and the number of offers that properties are seeing because at the end of the day, it may not mean very much that offer night scenario, but the third thing I want you to look out for in this market right now is year over year comparisons. Here's an example of uh, part of a tweet that was put out just today, actually. Toronto's housing market is starting the year a lot hotter than last year. What you can expect from January stats, sales up 33%. New listings down 1%, average price unchanged. Sales are up 33%, you know, relative to what? In this case, it's relative to January of 2023. And it's not even a spoiler alert, it's very well documented. January 2023 was the slowest month in terms of sales across TREB since January 2009. I think I made a prediction back in the middle of January that we'd end up at around 4,000 sales across all of TREB for January of 2024. It's looking like it's going to be between 41 and 4,200. So yes, it's going to be up 33% from last year, but that's up 33% from a historically slow sales year. Bottom line, if you're trying to look at the pace of the market and you know what is happening, looking at things month over month, looking at things relative to historical changes in the market is a much better indicator than just you know kind of blindly looking at numbers year over year. Okay, so I hope I've shed some light on some of the FOMO tactics that I'm seeing out there in the market. Just things for you to be aware of. Again, as I've always stood by, make a move when it is right for you, whether that's buying, selling, leasing a home, whatever makes the most sense for you is what you should be concerned about. Get your finances in order at home, get your budget set solid. If it works for you to make the move and you want to do it, go for it, but never any pressure to move at any time of the year based on what the market is doing or any of that nonsense. I hope you got some great value out of the video today. Till we speak again next time, please stay safe 
and cheers. Hey there, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, I've got another video for you right here on the screen. And you know, while you're here, maybe just click on my face, subscribe to, I don't want you to miss anything going forward.